Hi, now let's have a look at root cause analysis. This is the most common uh, method of investigation. But a, um, a description of root cause analysis is that you start from, from the outcome, from the known event, and you work backwards to try and find what caused that accident, and then what caused that, and what caused that. The whole idea is to uh, bypass or go past the, um, the external symptoms and go and find the actual root cause of what, what uh, led to this. It's uh, probably best used when you have a specific event um, as opposed to simply um, a, a differing state of things. So um, an event like um, you know, a traffic accident or, or something that is um, very readily identifiable is uh, probably your best um, to look at. And it's most effective when there are actual specific actions that are likely to lead to it. So I'll give you um, uh, an idea of the uh, process and then an example. To describe the process of root cause analysis, it's probably easiest to just step through an example. And I happen to have one here from a um, company called Think Reliably, or Think Reliability. Uh, they very generously put a lot of their uh, case studies up on the internet for you to look at. And this particular one is the Challenger explosion. For those who don't know, the Challenger was the um, NASA space shuttle that was launched in 1986 and not long after launch it blew up. Um, so it was a fairly easy to identify event. I mean this whole thing sitting up there in the sky has been, been uh, exploded in a very spectacular fashion live on television. So the outcomes that are evident uh, that you might focus on is that we lost seven astronauts. Okay, well, how come we lost seven astronauts? Well, we lost seven astronauts because the spacecraft exploded, and uh, the cause of that was that the fuel tank, um, the external fuel tank, exploded. So, so far we've gone from, well, we lost seven astronauts, and we really didn't want to lose seven astronauts. Uh, we lost them because the spacecraft exploded, and these, these sorry, this, the, we lost the spacecraft because the fuel tank exploded. And we go back, why did the fuel tank explode? Well, the external fuel tank exploded because uh, it was uh, blasted by a, a, a jet of um, uh, rocket propellant, lit rocket propellant, that uh, leaked out of the solid fuel rocket booster that was sitting beside the fuel tank. Uh, okay, so now we have essentially a, you know, a really big hot torch uh, lighting up this uh, external fuel tank and we want to know how come the solid fuel rocket booster sprung a leak and, and uh, was able to fire the tank. So that was tracked down to a, um, a failing, um, it's called an O-ring. Um, the solid fuel boosters are about uh, 20 feet in diameter and uh, made in sections. And to join the sections together, there's a rubber ring that's uh, probably about, um, say, 6 inches, 15 centimeters thick. Uh, it, it was designed to seal the sections so that the hot burning gases within the, um, uh, the solid fuel booster didn't leak out the sides. And it failed, and the, the hot propellant gas did leak out the sides and, and um, punctured the um, fuel tank. Now, you could say, well, no, we found the root cause, and we can, we can uh, stop this happening again by uh, repairing the, um, or redesigning the, the, uh, the ring seal for the salt fuel boosters. And that, in fact, was what happened. But the root cause analysis continued on to determine why it was that the um, spacecraft was launched in conditions that were not suited to the launch, that it was too cold, the rubber in the sealant was um, essentially too solid to form a, a steady seal, uh, why the, um, the seal um, 
hadn't been redesigned when there had been previously observed problems with this thing. Um, and then back on through the manufacture and the testing of the, the O-ring. So you can go back quite a long way. But that, in essence, uh, illustrates how the uh, root cause analysis operates. That you start from your known outcome and you work back, what caused this? Okay, why, why was this um, in this state? So uh, the, the actual outcome was that we lost seven astronauts. We lost them because the spacecraft uh, in which they were traveling um, fell out of the sky. It fell out of the sky because um, these, the uh, rocket on which it was um, carried exploded. And the rocket on which it was carried exploded because the um, solid fuel, fuel boosters leaked through a faulty seal in the side of them and ignited the, uh, the uh, fuel tank. Now let's briefly have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of root cause analysis. Uh, the advantages are uh, really that it is a, a readily accepted uh, method uh, and it's very, very flexible. Uh, when, when there is nothing else you can do, you can always have a look at the root cause analysis. So it's very flexible and uh, quite easy to, to use. However, um, it works best when you have um, things that are caused by events as opposed to things that are uh, subtle outcomes of the interaction of a large number of things that, that can get a little bit tricky. Uh, one of the other uh, aspects of root cause analysis is that the direction that the analysis takes can be quite subjective and determined by the knowledge and skills of the investigator. Now this is why when you're doing a root cause analysis you need somebody who, who really knows the domain and really knows the area so they can, they can um, focus attention on things that are uh, useful to investigate as opposed to uh, being distracted by um, red herrings or things that look interesting but in fact don't, don't matter that much. Uh, another uh, disadvantage of the uh, root cause analysis method is that um, uh, it's, it's very easy to attribute a cause um, that isn't actually the cause. Um, so frequently a root cause analysis will, will focus on some event when in fact uh, the primary cause of the accident is not so much the event, but the, the environment in which the event happened that um, allowed this to happen. So it's, it's not so good for picking up subtle um, conditions like that. 